good morning dear children your good deeds might seem invisible but they leave a trail that is imprinted on the hearts of others today let's see about the ancient civilization civilization is seen as an advanced organized way of life it has planning organization and specialization so as civilization began to make a shape with the huge buildings that has been built around the art and architecture have been developed with a different form of writing system not only that the science and technology has also been contributed for the betterment of society so today let's see about four civilization that is egyptian civilization mesopotamian civilization indus valley civilization and chinese civilization as the first civilization we are going to be familiar is egyptian civilization it's an oldest civilization which is known for monumental ar- architecture agriculture arts science and craft this is what is right river nile which is been flowing in egypt so as we talk about the civilization the civilization has been started and flourished by the river valley so when we are about to talk about the egyptian civilization we have to know about the river nile river nile have been originated from lake victoria which with the tremendous of water leads a means of society with the transport so nile valley is rich and fertile so every year when the flood arises it gives a new alluvium soil which increases the yield of agriculture but as we talk about this river nile we have to look around the egypt it is with desert So this is how the god has been created the sides of the river nile is desert and the society along the river nile is well fertile here is the river nile which has been flourished and even stands for tremendous of water and well being society when now we'll talk about society the egyptian society the king is considered as a divine form and uh, he was called as paro the hierarchy of society is governors mayors tax collectors artisans merchants peasants and slaves have been not common but also they have used slaves for doing a huge work especially we can insist here to build the pyramid he was a egyptian famous pharaoh we'll talk about the mummification egyptians believed that the life after death that is resurrection so they ought to preserve the dead bodies in the pyramids and tombs how do they preserve let's see about the process so this is a picture of the king paro and the mummification the scarpogius mummies of egypt the preserved dead body is called mummy and the egyptians had the tradition of preserving they preserve the dead bodies by using natron salt combination of sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate 
so they stuff all these things apply in the dead body and after 40 days when the salt absorbed all the moisture the body was filled with sardis and wrapped with the stripes of linen cloth and covered with the fabric the body was stored in the stone coffin called sarcophagus You can see the mummification, how the body have been decayed. The golden mask of Tutankhamen and his mummified body. Now we'll see about the agriculture and the trade. They cultivated wheat, barley, millets, vegetables, fruits for their daily use. And papyrus for the writing and cotton for their clothing. Not only that. They have been the domesticated animals and through this they had their food also. The, uh, what's it, the poultry and the milk products, the dairy products. The trade activities also have been flourished with other countries. They started to import as well as export their products to other countries. This is how they domesticated the animals. Art and architecture. Egyptians were excellent in their art and architecture, which even today speaks their value. The religion, what they have been followed is polytheism with different many gods. The philosophy, science, literature have been excelled very much. They also contributed sundial solar calendar, astronomy, medicine to the world. This is what different gods that they have been had in their society, they worshipped, they have offered offerings and did everything to these gods. Hierogilfic is one of the writing, you can see the way it is called as a pictographical form of writing. And the main gods, the ancient Egyptian gods were Amun, Seth, Thoth and statue of Horus and Anubis. The writing system, it was called as hieroglyphic, which has been used in a common purpose. It's in the form of photographic and which even now have been displayed in British Museum. In London, it has been preserved as a greatest value of Egyptian society. Yes, what do this papyrus mean? The word paper comes from papyrus. The Egyptians wrote on the leaves of the plant called papyrus. It's really wonderful, isn't it, children? It's a kind of reed which grew on the banks of Nile, which is used for writing. As we write on the paper, they write on the leaves called papyrus. The writing system. Hieroglyphics was used in the inscription on seals and also on the other objects. It was developed around 3000 BC. And many texts and books were written using this script, which even have been preserved and displayed in British Museum, London. This is what the Egyptian societies work. They are ploughing and the harvest, farming, and where it has been flourished. You can see in map how the river Nile have made the Egyptian society in a well fertile land. But on the other side we have eastern desert and western desert. The great pyramid of Giza, it's uh, wonders of the world. So the view of Spanix. Spanix means with the man face and the animal body. It's dated to the time of Pharaoh Gaffer. It is one of the largest scripture of the world, sculpture of the world. 
and measures 73 meters in length and 20 meters in height. So it was considered as one of the wonders of the world, ancient wonders of the world. Okay, we'll just come to the conclusion of Egyptian civilization, the characteristics and contribution of Egyptian civilization. The Egyptians developed a solar calendar which has been the introduction to the world by their society. The primates and their design show their mathematical and surviving skills. Hieroglyphic writing system attests to their skills in handling symbols with a pictographic way, the pictures. Not only that, the preservation of human body is in the form of mummies. They applied innovation and the use of science and technology. Thus, we end Egyptian civilization and we'll move on to the Mesopotamian civilization. Mesopotamian civilization. It has been flourished with the rivers. Two rivers. We'll see about this. It's in the region of Iraq and Kuwait in West Asia. The several kingdoms have been emerged around this uh, river and the civilization also have been flourished and got a name to the world. It has been flourished between two rivers. The rivers were Euphrates and Tigris. So what do you mean by Mesopotamia? Meso means in between Potamus means river. So the land between the rivers is called as Mesopotamian. And the civilization that has been flourished also have been good and energetic, well fertile. By the north you can see Assyrian and the south you can see Babylonian society. The Sumerians. So children with these Mesopotamian civilization we are going to see some of the societies how they have been started and emerged how they have overpowered one after the other the first one we are going to see is Sumerian society it's an older civilization had trade connections with other countries originated from Central Asia and also developed the cuneiform writing system so this is how the Sumerians developed. You can see two rivers, Tigris and Euphrates. Well, and some of the important cities of Mesopotamia. The next we are going to see is Akkadians. The Sargon was a famous ruler who had many descendants and ruled for 100 years. So they were well familiar with commercial and cultural centers. The third civilization flourished here is with Babylonians. Hope they were the one to stand for a long period after Akkadians. The, they were Semitic people who have been called as Amorites from Arabian desert. Hammurabi, the greatest king, gave the law to the world so he was called as a lawmaker he was also considered by the babylonians as a divine king so they have been given gilgamesh and written epic to the world this was the first written epic to the world given by babylonians through mesopotamian civilization assyrians they were politically active. The kings were chief priests. Asabanipal was a famous ruler who had maintained famous library and this has been given to the world and after that everyone started to have their library of their own. Well, commonly we'll see all these four as a society, state and administration over here. They had city-states, well-developed building, 
and also cultivated lands the zigrids which has been in the center were been called as a fortified city where the trade have been flourished the education has been taken place so zigrids were the temple where it has been flourished with many things and have been exposed to the world controlled by the priest and uh, this zigrid the temples were been considered as a storehouse so this temple also acted as a bank they had given a loan for the people in a credit basis and collected interest their well developed script was called as cuneiform writing so it's a part of fourth millennium hieroglyphic the egyptian system have been writing and developed in the third millennium so the harappan society also had the same time but uh, the harappan's writing was not deciphered not known to the world the chinese system also with the early period of writing but over here the mesopotamian who followed the cuneiform writing in the 4th century food and agriculture the main occupation is food and agriculture uh, because they hardly need food doesn't it so it has been ir- irrigated and followed in their society wheat barley onions turnips and grapes have been cultivated not only that they have dev- domesticated animals they even known fish as a diet trade and exchange it was considered as an important activity for sumerian and assyrian society the navigation was known through this they had transported many goods and temple acted as a bank as i have told you earlier it is as credit basis people borrowed money with interest this is what is the great of wo the assyrian empire was the first military state in history they emerged militarily powerful because they were the earliest to use iron technology effectively so this is why they have been able to have as a storehouse as a bank and had it to be in a credit base it lend money to the people cities and well town plan here let us see about the cities which have been constructed with baked bricks so with huge walls and gates so it was well planned the ziggurat the temple acted as a center place for everything for education for the communication even for trade around it they had ceremonial courtyards shrines burial chambers banquets hall and workshops granaries storehouses not only that with the good administrative buildings now we'll see about the religion of mesopotamian civilization here also they were about to follow polytheism several god and goddesses nippu was enel to worship and istar was the god of love and fertility babylonian king hammurabi code of laws he was about to get from divine god who is the creator of the world and wanted to give it to the world with certain rules and regulation to the people so he was the first king to make the law well let's see about what is this hammurabi code it's an important legal document had 282 provisions carved on stone so its main aim is an eye for an eye and tooth for tooth it means if an enemy have been hurted he have to be hurt with the same attack this is what is an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth 
astone image of lamasu he was considered as a god what is this hammurabi code in detail says about hammurabi came up with ruthless laws because he thought it would bring peace to the society and not only to the society even to the world hammurabi thought this because he wanted to he wanted laws no one would dare to break so which the law have been made that has to be followed so a severe punishment also has been given to them so it has a collection of 282 laws the laws was to bring peace and set standard for conduct and justice we'll see about art and science the sculptures in stone and clay excelled in mathematics astrology and medicine it developed numerical system measured areas and solids weights and measurement system also have been introduced and given to the world what is this cuneiform writing it has been written on that tablet we'll see about that it's a sumerian writing system the shape of the letter is in the form of wedge and hence it's called as cuneiform it has been evolved around 3000 bc as a one of the earliest scripts of the world they used the scripts for commercial transaction and writing letters and stories it has been written on the clay tablets contains loads of information on the sumerian society if you see a tablet that is a small clay a square tablet it gives a lots and lots of information that's how it has been written well we'll see about the contribution of the mesopotamian civilization the invention of the potter's wheel is credited to sumerians so many society as like assyrians babylonians sumerians akkadians have been developed but the sumerians have been top among them they developed the calendar system of 360 days and divided a circle into 360 units which you are about to use in geometry the cuneiform system of writing was their contribution the hammurabi's law code was another legacy of the mesopotamians thus we end today's lesson and will follow and continue in next session thank you children